Hi, welcome to my review of The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smile, directed by Peter Jackson, a film that continues Bilbo's journey alongside 13 dwarves and a wizard to take back Erebor from the dragon that has claimed it. I'm going to start this review by talking about An Unexpected Journey. What did I think of it? Well, for the most part, I liked it. Didn't love it, but I liked it. I found the lighthearted, goofy tone of The Hobbit to be a little off-putting, considering how dark uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy was. And that's really more to do with me than the actual material, because, well, The Hobbit is very much a children's book. And it also didn't help either that The Hobbit had... I believe to be an excessive amount of CGI. Just, I mean, CGI that just really wasn't necessary. But overall, after revisiting it on HBO, I actually found the movie to be, you know, a good kids film. I think it's something that's very enjoyable. Not great, but very good. And furthermore, I thought the Metascore that it received was actually undeserving. I actually thought it deserved something quite higher than that. And that's unfortunate. Because like I said, I believe it to be a very good film. However, as for the desolation of Smaug, Unfortunately, I'm a bit perplexed. Now hear me out, before you click that dislike button, I like the film. I don't hate it, nothing like that. I do have some problems with it, and I'm going to tell you all those, but before I do, just know that, look, it's just an opinion. If you love the film, you think it's one of the greatest films of all time, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not here to persuade you into thinking differently. I'm just here to give you my view on it, my honest view, and nothing more. So just believe that, okay? In fact, I wish I loved the film as much as everyone else has seemed to be loving it, because it seems like a lot of people absolutely love this film. They think it's a, a big improvement from the first in the series. I disagree. And here I'm going to tell you why. First, I'm start with the bad. Now first, this was a problem that was in the first installment of the series. And that, of course, again, is the excessive use of CGI. I'm not someone who hates on CGI in general. I mean, look, when it's needed, when it's necessary, when it's used tastefully, like it was done in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, then it's completely okay. There's nothing wrong with it. However, when it's used in such an excessive manner, the way it is in the Hobbit films, it just kind of takes me out of the film. It takes me out of the experience. And furthermore, it can really make a film just look sort of cheap and uninspired, and at times, the Hobbit does feel that way. Now there are some real landscape shots with the dwarves walking across the scenery and with those scenes it looks great because well it's using a real setting. However when it goes back to the CGI stuff it takes me right out. Now to be fair I can't necessarily blame Desolation of Smaug for doing it considering that An Unexpected Journey did it as well and in fact these movies have already been made so we're pretty much stuck with what we got. Um, it is a problem that I do have though and I Thought it was worth mentioning. But perhaps what's arguably the biggest problem with Desolation of Smaug is that it's just way too long. I was enjoying the film for like the first hour or so, but when the film got to Luke Evans' character, the film to me just kind of slowed down to a somewhat uncomfortable pace. And not only that, but as I was watching the film, I had no idea, but I was kind of thinking to myself, you know, some of the stuff seems a bit out of place, some of these plot points and characters, and as it turns out, this stuff actually was not present in the book, and that might be why. Now, Tariel is a fine character, and she certainly was better than the Liv Tyler character Arwen because, well, Arwen absolutely had no depth, and as far as the films go, because I haven't read the books, she was by far, by far the weakest character in the entire series. I mean, really, the character was pretty, you know? But it was really this whole love triangle between her, Legolas, and one of the dwarves that I really could have done without, and in fact, I found it to be a bit on the cheesy side. But besides that, I do like the aspect of having a strong female character, and as far as that goes, I did find that to be actually quite necessary. And continuing on with characters, Bilbo the Hobbit, his presence is almost non-existent in a great portion of this film. In fact, it's really Thorin's film, and I did find that to be a problem. Thorin, he's kind of a difficult character to like, and He's just kind of an asshole. He's being presented as sort of the Aragorn of this trilogy, but instead of being a character who is tough and has this just great amount of pure integrity, 
Thorin is an asshole who has this very smug attitude. I just find it somewhat baffling considering how much Bilbo has been through all the things that he's done, and not just the previous installment, but this one as well, that Thorin still continues to treat Bilbo like he's worthless. I mean, considering the ending of The Hobbit, it really does feel like something like this should have been resolved, considering that this was the second installment in the series. And that might be due to the fact that, well, The Hobbit is one narrative. I mean, it is one book. It wasn't really meant to be cut up into three parts as a trilogy because, hell, the book is actually smaller than all the Lord of the Rings books, so that could be a contributing factor to why this was a problem. Again, I have read the books, but I do presume that there is some kind of respect that is given to Bilbo at some point at the end of the book. And one last thing about Thorin, I do want to say that when Thorin has his little moment, it just seemed a bit premature and very undeserving. And that's all I have to say. As for the good, albeit that by the time the film did reach this scene, I was becoming slightly restless and I was kind of ready for the film to start wrapping itself up, the scene with Smaug is pretty awesome. Now, I don't believe it to be as great as the scene between Bilbo and Gollum in the previous film because, well, that is a fantastic scene and very funny as well. Not saying that this isn't a great scene either because it is. What I really like about it is that it's just really epic, and it is something that actually is deserving of its long length. And believe me, the scene with Bilbo and Smaug, it goes on for a very long time, and that I actually liked. However, the only problem is, I just wish it came sooner. As for the performances, Benedict Cumberbatch does some great voice work as Smaug. He's aggressive, yet at the same time, he has this sort of grace about him. I know that doesn't make any sense, but... He kind of did, and you know, he does have this great deep voice, fit the character perfectly, so yeah, I really liked him in this. Martin Freeman is another one, however, I just wish I saw more of him because, well, that would have been great, but from what I did see, I did really like. Even though I didn't like his character, I must say that I do believe that Richard Armitage is really good in the film, and it was nice to see Orlando Bloom reprise his role as Legolas, even though... Legolas in this film seemed a bit more dickish and a lot more aggressive than he did in the previous films. And one thing that I do need to mention, kind of going back on something that I did kind of reference earlier, but I didn't really talk about the good side of things, is the CGI. Albeit that it was a bit excessive, the CGI itself is actually good. However, there are some awkward bits and pieces here and there, but for the most part, it is well produced, especially Smaug, so bravo to the effects team because they did a really good job with this. And furthermore, I did really like the art direction of this. It was very nice and pretty. And lastly, as for the action scenes, I did find them to be very enjoyable, a lot of fun to watch, especially the barrel sequence. That was excellent. A little too long, maybe, perhaps, but still very, very good. Overall, I like the destination of Smaug okay. I don't believe it's as good as the first one, considering that the first one was, I believe, to be, you know, a really good setup for the up-and-coming events, and I just found it to be more captivating than Desolation of Smaug. And furthermore, it sure as hell nowhere near as good as the masterfully, intricately crafted Lord of the Rings trilogy. But then again, to be fair, not many films are. But with all that said, I do believe the Desolation of Smaug to be a decent film. A lot of people do disagree, a lot of people believe it to be the best one of the series so far. Unfortunately, I'm not quite there, so I'm going to give The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug, a somewhat lower, but still, 3 out of 5. I do believe it to be a good film, so I'm not saying it's a bad film, it's a good film. Just good, okay? I'm Colin Kirkland, and thank you so much for watching.